from its environment, not transplanted to tree, but growing from the seed that is planted in the nature in the African soil. And during that very time, 1960s, Nyerere became the first black chancellor of the University of East Africa, which combined Makerere University, University in Nairobi, and the University in Dalasana. When he was accepting to be the black chancellor, he already raised some of the questions which we are raising today. Particularly the question of saying, what would be the relationship between the university and society? What would be the relationship between the university and the state? And what would be the relationship of the university, the African university, and the world? And he actually put it this way. He said, there are two possible dangers facing a university in a developing nation. The danger of blindly adoring international standards, which may cast a shadow on national developmental objectives, and the danger of forcing our universities to look inwards and isolate itself from the world. And al Mazuri then intervened there and then, arguing that a university has to be politically distanced from the state. Second, the university has also to be culturally close to society. And the third, that the university has to be intellectually linked to the wider scholarly and the scientific values of the world of learning. A question which today, every time you raise the question of decolonization, then people mistook you to be saying, let's close ourselves out. And my argument always is that the universities which are in Africa have never been isolated from the world. Their problem is not isolation from the world. The problem is they are encouraged in Africa. So it's, we push this question of internationalization at the expense of making the university relevant to its constituencies where it is located. But by saying that, I'm not therefore saying the issue of internationalization is not important. What I'm then saying is that when we're talking about internationalization, we need to think about it from a decolonial perspective. And the thinking about it from a decolonial perspective means that you don't link that university with Oxford first. You jump to the whole region, the whole continent, the whole global south, you link with Oxford. If you are doing that, you are doing what we call vertical internationalization. And what I want to talk about is horizontal internationalization, whereby we need to link our universities first in the region, in the continent, in the global south, then we end up with Europe. I don't think that actually then destroys the argument of internationalization. But if you have a colonial conception of internationalization, then international is Oxford. The second important issue here is that the struggles which were embarked on by the students under the roads must fall and the fees must fall actually follow after a rich uh, uh, a tradition of attempts to decolonize the university. And I will go very quickly through that. You can go to the example of what Hugo Guationg and two of his colleagues were trying to do in Nairobi in 1968-1969. You can go to what was happening in Ibadan, at Ibadan University, where they successfully countered uh, colonial historiography and the colonial historiography. But the question which arises is, you can Africanize without decolonizing. This is where we need to then have a discussion. I think they might have successfully Africanized. It, the, the vice chancellors became black. The professorate became black. The students became black. But you can't then sit and say, I've decolonized the university because I've done that. Because the epistemo epistemological scaffold of the knowledge remains Eurocentric. And it, for my discipline, which is a discipline of history, it's very easy to then present what I'm talking about. You can actually change the historiography without changing the philosophy of history. You can change the historiography without changing the philosophy of history. Some people speak about it more clear in terms of the puppet here and then the puppets. The one who is hiding behind the scene, making new dance on the, on the stage without being seen. And what we did 
with the historical, changing historiography, is to insert Africans in a state which is already set. And there is an important book which I would, I, I, I would suggest, the book by the Congolese historian Jacques Depelchi, Sciences in African History. Where he argues that the problem is that when they accepted African history as a professional history, they had the discipline did to fit all of the thematics of Western history. So he says there is what we, we must speak about in terms of paradigmatic colonization of a discipline by another discipline. And then you can speak about what was happening in Dakar. You know, the, the, the contestation in brief was that in Dakar, they then, I'm sorry, in, 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 in Ibadan, they then went on with Africanization from a nationalist perspective, but their problem was that they didn't de-eliticize history. De-eliticize history. So what they did was always to think about history being made by big men and the big women, queens and queens and the kings. The Ibadan, I'm sorry, the Dalasan school then intervened to say, but the problem is that we are thinking about history from above. So in, in, in Dalasan, the intervention, the contribution of the Rasa was actually trying to produce what we call history from below, the history of the peasant, the worker, and everyone. They were using the political economy 